Hope that you have been having a good week. Uh, I am uh, making this new video and uh, it may be the last video that I actually shoot in this room because uh, lucky me, I am moving into a new place. Uh, it'll have a bit more space and it will have a bit more space for podcasting slash recording slash YouTubing slash whatever as well. So that'll be good because it means that I'll be able to make slightly better quality videos. Um, but uh, today's topic is basically going to be why I am not ever considering getting lean. And I'm going to say this with the caveat that certainly I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I don't know if, you know, maybe one day I'm just going to be like, oh, you know, I do want to decide to get really lean. Um, but I don't really have any intention of ever getting lean. And that's something that confuses a lot of people. So I kind of want to dig into why that is, um, you know, why that's sort of maybe a problem with the way that people think about fitness and so on. Um, so, you know, to start off, to give you an idea of how sort of we judge these things, uh, basically, uh, for men, uh, basically about a five to 10% body fat percentage, uh, is considered super lean. So that's when you're a bodybuilder, that's when you're stage ready, you're super lean, you're looking really jacked, you look awesome. Um, and then there's about, you know, say about 10 to 15%, which is okay, you're athletic, but you're not quite so lean, you know, maybe you're a power lifter who's competing, uh, you know, maybe you're a bodybuilder in your off season, whatever. Um, anything above that, you know, 15 to 20% is like, okay, you're athletic, but maybe you're holding on to a little bit of extra weight. Uh, or, you know, maybe you're just not a person who lifts too much. Um, and, you know, basically, and of course, it's different for, you know, women as well, women tend to hold a bit more. Um, but, you know, so basically that's the way that everyone thinks about, you know, if you're lifting, you know, you should be lean or you should be strong. That's kind of the, the way that people tend to think about things. And I think that that's a problem because I've gotten a lot of messages, you know, anonymous messages in the past, um, you know, from people and, you know, sort of deriding my physique or saying, oh, you're really not that lean. You look like you just, you know, bulk or, you know, I had someone basically say, you know, oh, you don't look like you're ever getting lean. So are you just focusing on strength or what's your deal? And I was kind of like, you know, why does it have to be that? Why does it have to be either getting lean or getting strong? Um, you know, Scott Herman, he's like the guy who makes, you know, like all those YouTube videos demoing different exercises. Um, he's, you know, people know him pretty well. I used to see comments on his videos all the time that were basically like, Scott, um, you know, you have been making videos and your physique now looks almost the same as it does a year ago. Uh, you know, so why is that? Why are you not leaner? Uh, why have you not gotten stronger? You know, whatever the case, because again, people think that it has to be just those, those are the options. Either you're getting leaner, or you're getting stronger. That's it. Um, and I think that that applies even when you're not talking about lifting weights or even when you're not talking about sort of bodybuilding or powerlifting, uh, you know, people tend to do it with all kinds of other athletes as well. Uh, they don't really think of people as athletes unless they either look like athletes, which to them means really lean, or if, you know, they can demonstrate some kind of really, you know, high performance skill, you know, strength, uh, having super high endurance or so on. Um, and I think that, you know, while people are getting over the idea a little bit that it all has to be about how you look in terms of your leanness, uh, you know, it's, it's not great, you know, people have not progressed to the point where they recognize that people could have a lot of different potential goals for lifting weights and for training. And in addition to that, people could really just be looking to maintain, uh, which is something that not really a lot of people talk about. I wrote a pretty good blog post a while back about how basically, if you were to basically train every single day and you were to not gain a single pound of muscle and you were to not gain a single, you know, if you weren't able to gain any strength, but if you trained every single day and you were the exact same now, you know, you, you know, exact same 10 years from now as you are now, that's a huge success because the general trend is that over time you are getting weaker, you are getting, you know, you're gaining weight, you're losing muscle mass. So if you're literally seeing no results, that's still a huge improvement over seeing negative results, which is the, which is what normally happens when we age. So, uh, you know, for lots of people who, you know, maybe they don't have super high athletic goals, maybe they don't have a ton of time to train and so on, you know, maintenance is a perfectly acceptable goal for them. They could just want to go into the gym, you know, maybe train two, three times a week, very light workouts, not try too hard, uh, you know, just have, you know, a nice workout and get out. And, you know, they're going to be in great shape relative to people who don't do anything over time, because again, they're staving off a lot of that, 
you know, normal age related drop off that you're seeing. So, you know, maintenance is a perfectly acceptable goal. I don't know why people don't think about that as an acceptable goal. Um, but, you know, to talk a little bit more about sort of my my personal situation, you know, I don't compete anymore. Um, basically, I got into lifting when I was a teenager. Uh, at the time, I was training more of a, you know, sort of bodybuilder style, but I didn't really know what I was doing uh, up until I graduated university. And I basically got my personal training certification. I learned a lot more at that point. And at that point, I got really into, into powerlifting and I just really wanted to be really strong. So I said, okay, I'm going to train only for powerlifting, only for strength. That was it. Uh, you know, I did that for a few years. I competed a few times. That was great. Um, but, you know, you, you get to a point where your progress is going to be slower because you've been training for a long time. And as your progress starts to slow down, you start to realize that you're not going to see progress on a month to month basis. You're going to see progress every six months. You're going to see progress every 12 months, whatever it is. And so to me, it, it, it's not very motivating to compete all the time if your numbers are going to be basically the same as they were the last time you competed. And so when I look at it and it's like, okay, it's going to take me 12 months of hard training to get to the point where I put, you know, 10 pounds on my deadlift or whatever. Um, you know, I'm willing to do that. I'm very excited to do that, but I don't want to compete every three months or whatever, because that's just going to throw things off. It's just going to, you know, sort of psych me out and mess up my training. Um, you know, so I started competing less and less, uh, you know, because again, I was seeing slower and slower results. That's normal. And then, you know, I moved a bunch, I started building my online business, uh, you know, it, things slowed down more. And so, you know, I didn't feel like finding meets. I didn't feel like finding meets when I'm traveling a lot, when I'm moving a lot, um, you know, and so I just kind of fell out of competing. I figured, oh, you know, it doesn't matter to me. The competing is not the part that matters. The part that matters is that I know that I'm improving, that I can see my results and that I can continue to progress and continue to train. And so, you know, over the last few years, I've hit that point of diminishing returns for training for strength. And I've hit it hard enough that to me, it doesn't make sense to just keep training for strength. And, you know, I was having some health issues maybe about two years back. I realized that I've inherited my blood pressure issues from my dad, who has had blood pressure issues his whole life. Uh, so, you know, I thought I said, okay, well, I need to step back from doing all this heavy lifting. I need to do slightly less heavy lifting, focus a little bit more on building muscle, focus a little bit more on getting my cardio in and, you know, building up my endurance. And so, you know, that's what I've been doing for a few years. And, I've also just, you know, in the, at the same time, you know, yes, I'm still focusing on seeing my strength increase. I'm still seeing increases in my strength, but you know, at the same time, I'm a little bit more focused on building muscle, putting on a lot more of that. And, you know, that's been working really well. I've been able to see, you know, pretty good progression there, but I'm not trying to get lean. I don't have any reason. I don't have any desire to get lean. There's no reason for that. I have never been a person who has really enjoyed focusing on my diet too much. You know, yes, I've gone through bulks and cuts in the past and, you know, yes, I can get the results I want, but I'm not a fan of it. It's it's just a level of effort that I just don't feel like putting in. Uh, so, you know, it, it's not it's not a kind of thing that I enjoy doing. And so I am not going to do it unless I have a reason to do it, which would be competing. But I don't compete. I have no desire to compete either. I really care a lot more about just being able to see, you know, results on my own terms and not worrying so much about competing. So I think that a lot of people think that you have to be lean to be in good shape because they see all these images of fitness models and bodybuilders who are super lean, but they don't realize that most of these lifters are not that lean all of the time. They are just lean for that specific photograph or for that specific competition or whatever. And then, you know, they go ahead and put the weight back on because it really sucks to diet down to the point where you're that lean. You're going to have energy issues. Uh, you're basically going to have, you know, potential for eating disorders, increased risk of injury or disease. And, you know, there's no point to doing it. It's going to compromise the rest of your training. There's no point in doing it if, you know, you're not going to get something out of it. And so that's, again, why the only time that people actually get super lean is for competition. That's what they do. They do it for competition or if they want to do a very nice photo shoot and then, you know, the instant the photo shoot is over, the instant the competition is over, they put some of that weight back on because, you know, again, it's not a great position to be in for a long period of time. So, uh, you know, you don't need to be super lean forever. It's, it's not the way people should be 
normally all the time. It helps. It is useful if you are trying to accomplish a certain goal. And, you know, again, your goal is to compete, but that's just not me. It's not me. I don't care. You know, you can be a person who just wants to build mass, who just wants to put on weight, who just wants to put on some muscle and some strength over time. And, you know, I may plan on competing, you know, in bodybuilding or powerlifting in the future, but I basically have no desire to do so at the current moment. You know, maybe a few years down the line, I'll get to a point where I'm really proud of all the work that I've put in. I'll say, okay, now I want to try something, you know, a little bit new. Now I want to, you know, push it a little bit further and take on, you know, the next level. Um, but, you know, that's just not me right now. It really just isn't. I've got a lot more stuff going on in my life. You know, I'm a dad. I am dealing with, you know, running my business. I'm dealing with my day job. Um, you know, I've got a lot of stuff going on. And so to me, you know, yes, fitness is still an incredibly important part of my life. I still train just as hard as I did. And in fact, harder than I used to, um, you know, before. Uh, but, you know, it, it's just the diet thing is just the thing that I just don't have the energy or the willpower to focus on right now. And that's fine. You know, I think that I'm, I'm a big advocate of people being honest with themselves about sort of the energy levels that they have in their life and recognizing, okay, I want to prioritize X and Y and Z in my life. I have the energy for X and Y and Z. That means I'm going to leave out all these other things that I don't care about. I'm a big fan of learning what is most important to you, learning to focus on that and just ignoring everything else and just letting that stuff fall to the side. Um, and, you know, in the meantime, it's super fun. I get to enjoy myself a little bit more. I get to do things like, you know, have some extra ice cream or whatever, because, you know, I don't worry so much about my diet. It doesn't matter so much. I'm, you know, making sure that I'm hitting my protein targets. I am making sure that I have enough energy for my carbs. I am, you know, trying not to eat garbage all the time. And I'm making sure that I'm getting in plenty of fiber and that, you know, basically all my nutrient uh, needs are covered. And, you know, that's a lot simpler than worrying about, every single calorie and calorie counting and, you know, what, it, you know, all that stuff that it takes to get lean for me personally. Um, so that's kind of the, the rough overview of why I don't, you know, do this. Uh, I will add to kind of move on to the next part of the conversation. There is plenty of value to the old school model of bulking and cutting. So, you know, for those that maybe, you know, don't know it too well, uh, the sort of old school method that people would use to get lean and to, you know, get big over a long period of time is bulking and cutting, which basically means that you're going through alternating phases of, you know, you're bulking, you're gaining weight, you're gaining, you know, some excess body fat percentage, but at the same time, you're building a lot of muscle. And then there is the cutting phase where, okay, you are focusing on leaning out, you're losing as much of that body fat as possible and ideally keeping as much of that muscle as possible. Uh, and then, you know, the ideal you know point is that yes, over time you build lots of muscle without having to add a ton of excess fat mass. Um, so there is justification behind this, scientific justification, right? So uh, basically the way our bodies work is that the more body fat percentage we have, the less insulin resistant or the, le the less insulin sensitive, excuse me, we are. And so, you know, when you are very lean, your body is very insulin sensitive, and that actually makes it a bit easier to build muscle mass. Uh, you know, conversely, when you have a lot of fat mass, you are less insulin sensitive, and that means that, you know, basically it's just harder to build more muscle mass. And so, you know, this is why you'll actually, you know, I don't know if you've heard that a lot of bodybuilders use insulin as a performance enhancing drug, uh, and that this is basically the reason why. So, um, of course, it's a spectrum, you know, basically, you know, the leaner you're going to be versus, you know, the less lean you're going to be, you know, the easier it's going to be to build muscle on this side, the harder it's going to be on this side. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's a spectrum, but at the same time, there's kind of a, a cutoff point that people like to use, which is about 15%. So basically, if you are much below 15% body fat, that means, okay, you are pretty lean, you might as well focus on bulking up and you know, so on, so on. And then if you're much above 15% body fat, it's like, okay, you're not so lean, you might as well focus on cutting down. Um, so that's a pretty basic rule of thumb. That really works well for people. I think that when you are getting to the very elite levels, you know, when you are a serious lifter who has been training for a long time, and you know, you've, you're pretty far into the diminishing returns territory, and you know, you're just looking to maximize the amount of muscle that you can build for competition, that is definitely the best approach to take. 
uh, but it is a lot more complicated of an approach. It's a lot more difficult of an approach. Certainly it doesn't work well for everybody. Certainly it's not something that I enjoy doing personally. So if you are like me, basically what I do is I sit at right around 15% body fat, maybe a little bit more, and I just train and I just train and I don't worry about it too much and it works well for me. Uh, you know, there's been phases certainly where I've done bulks and cuts in the past. There's been phases where I've been much higher body fat percentage or phases where I've been much lower body fat percentage. Um, but, you know, basically I just sit at a comfortable level and I just train and again, everything works out fine for me. So uh, that kind of really covers basically the main topic for today. Um, as always, like, comment, tell me what you want to see in future videos. I do have one Q&A this week from my Curious Cat, so I am going to pull that up now. Okay, so this question, again, this is 14 days ago. I've been bad at answering questions. Sorry to announce. Uh, Anon asked, do you find any value in training the hip flexors directly, like at least once a week, exercises like the psoas march, etc.? Um, so for people who don't know what that means, the hip flexors are basically some muscles that are sort of located, um, you know, kind of in the groin area. They're basically attached to the front of the leg, the top of the legs, and they cross over into sort of the, uh, the back, basically, the, the spine. Um, and so the hip flexors are basically the muscles that help when you do things that involve, like, raising your legs. So basically, if you are, you know, say, bringing your knee to your chest, that's an example of the hip flexors at work. Um, the problem with training the hip flexors is that the hip flexors don't get a lot of training in real life uh, because there's not a lot of situations in which you're trying to do that movement against resistance. Um, you know, basically, you're not, like, trying to very violently pull your legs into your chest in most cases. Um, so there's not a lot of sort of athletic movements that really directly rely on the hip flexors much at all. But at the same time, the hip flexors are very indirectly useful in all kinds of ways. So when you're doing basically any kind of core training, the hip flexors are usually somewhat related to that uh, because a lot of core exercises also involve that kind of movement. So you're basically oftentimes training the hip flexors alongside the core. Um, you know, there, there can be pain issues where maybe you pull something and, you know, training the hip flexors can sort of help keep that area moving and help keep that area recovering and can help, uh, you know, alleviate any pain or issues that are, you know, caused as a result of that. Um, but, uh, you know, so in a general sense, right, it's, it's a very good idea to be well-rounded as a, as a lifter, as an athlete and so on. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a good idea to sort of dip your toes into a lot of different types of movement and do a lot of different types of activity because that tends to be a generally good thing. It means that, you know, you're a little bit more well-rounded. Um, you know, you're not exposing yourself to too much risk for injury because you're sort of covering all your bases in terms of, you know, just getting a little bit of everything in. Um, at the same time, you know, is it something where it's like, oh, you know, if I train my hip flexors, it's going to supercharge my squat or something, right? Like that's probably not going to happen. Um, so something that I, something that I sort of tell people is, you know, I remember back when I was not as good of a lifter, when I used to get way too in the weeds on little things. And I think that a lot of people have this problem where you worry a lot, you know, you worry about little things in huge, you know, disproportion to the amount of energy you actually should be focusing on these things. And so, you know, back when I was, you know, starting out as a personal trainer, I used to think that core training was a lot more important than it is, even though I really just worried about my powerlifting numbers going up. And so I would spend all this endless time doing yoga, doing core stuff, you know, literally like huge amounts of time doing core stuff that frankly, I didn't really get any, anything out of, right? So, you know, and nowadays I, I don't do basically much, much of any of it in comparison. I do a little bit here and there, cover my bases, that's it. And I still am seeing much better progress than I was before. Um, so, you know, when I say something like that, when I say, yes, you probably want to train your hip flexors a bit. Um, what I mean is a little bit. I mean, 
you're probably going to be wasting energy if you're going to focus on it too much unless of course you are in a situation where you have been dealing with some kind of injury some kind of pain issue and you have gone to a physical therapist and they have said this is what you need um, i would check in with a physical therapist in that sort of situation because i am not a physical therapist and um you know this isn't that's not really my area of expertise so uh what i would say is yes probably do a little bit of training for the hip flexors it's probably not something that you need to worry about too much if it is something that you need to worry about too much that is not my area of specialty so i would talk to a physical therapist about that instead um yeah so that is it for this week uh as always hit me up with some more questions on curious cat for next week and uh you know like comment tell me what you want to see in future videos i will see you guys next time have a good one Hi everyone, I should probably remember to plug my Patreon more often. Uh, go over there and sign up if you would like to support the show. Uh, as always, you can get some sweet exercise programs for signing up, uh, plus of course uh, ensuring that I can make more videos like this.